Hello and welcome to RSNA 2014. My name is Brian Casey. I'm Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. And we are here with Dr. Paul Chang of the University of Chicago. Dr. Chang, thanks for being with us. Thanks for inviting me. Now, we also did an interview last year at the 2013 RSNA and you talked about the Kubler-Ross uh, five stages of grief <laughs> in terms of how that applies to radiology. Uh, where do we stand now and, and has any progress been made since last year or have we regressed? A little of both. Uh, I think we, you know, when you look at the five stages, I think we're past the anger. I think we're a little past the depression. It's like, okay, now how do I, how do I thrive? How do I add value in this new environment during this hedge period, which is the real challenge. It's not the movement towards capitation or aligned risk or shared risk. It's really this period of time where half of my contracts are f still fee for service and half of them are, are now shared risk. It's looking for a, a hedging strategy. So I think we're still, we're now kind of in the early acceptance phase. But I think, you know, compared to last year, you know, I said one of the problems is we're still very early in this process. And so as a result, we're still in the, 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 the hype and the buzzword phase where there's, the solutions aren't really real yet, but at least the vendors and the folks that are trying to establish mind share in the community at least are articulating the challenges. So that's the buzzword. And you have to have buzzwords first. That, that's fine. And we have new buzzwords now, and, right. and like, better, like, right? like big data and, and all that. But the, the standard buzzwords of value, relevance, and being impactful, aligned, uh, are still there. Okay. I think, though, unfortunately, we're taking kind of a, a little step back, and it's no one's fault. I think what it has to do with the fact is that we're beginning to slightly diverge in our respective trajectories when you compare it to where radiology is, radiologists, and what we're trying to do to demonstrate our value with this, these new models and these new disruptions, and what our vendor community is doing. I'm beginning to see slight deviation in trajectory, which was not the case. One of the biggest luxuries we had early on in, 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 in radiology is because we floated everyone's boat financially. I mean, we were a revenue generator, not just for us in radiology, but for hospitals. But we also floated the medical uh, industrial complex. We, because we were so profitable, uh, vendors were able to invest in R&D and we were able to benefit from wonderful advancements in imaging and informatics, PACs. Uh, we floated everyone's boat. Now as we become what they call a mature market, which is always the death nail, you never want to be a mature market, you want to be a growth market. When you're a mature market, vendors are beginning to realize should we now begin to start decoupling our wagon to radiology and couple the wagon to the more of, the, of, of a growth field. And, and that growth field tends to be enterprise driven. You know, the EMR, yep. enterprise type image, IT strategic requirements. And I'm beginning to see that at this meeting. It started a little bit uh, last year, but we were still in the buzzword for everything, yep. buzzword phase. Now we're beginning to see real products, but now some of the products to me won't move the needle with respect to radiology and radiologists. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for meaningful innovation that will help me demonstrate my relevance and value. We talked about last year about being the doctor's doctor again. Sure, yeah. Before PACS, everything started in radiology. We didn't have to read, no one needed to read my reports. Why? Because we collaborated several times a day. It was a rich collaboration. Yeah. We demonstrated our value. Now we want to go back to those days in an electronic world where we're distributed, and we can. We can learn from our kids who have 20 ways to talk to each other on their phones. We can use and leverage those IT kinds of advances. But the problem I see is, although we're, we are seeing vendors address those issues, you know, how do I improve my relevance? How do I demonstrate the, the fact that I add value to taking care of patients? You're beginning to also see vendors starting to decouple from radiology, beginning to hitch their wagons to enterprise IT initiatives, which is very smart for them. Like I said, there's no bad guys in here. There no, there's, there's no evil people here. It's, I think it's a natural evolution of where we're going. As we move from being a revenue generator to a cost center, as we move from being a growth to a mature market in radiology, the vendors, it's only rational for them to look for greener pastures. And that's the reason when, we, when you hear words like uh, uh, deconstructing packs or, or new model for image management or enterprise packs. These are all terms that basically reflect uh, a, an IT 
perspective. In other words, how can IT in the enterprise better manage digital imaging? How do I herd the cats? How do I support the idiosyncratic needs of radiology, pathology, radiology, visible light in, in a manageable way? These are all valid concerns. My concern as a radiologist is, while that's important, and from a vendor perspective, that makes a lot of sense to hitch your wagon to that because those, that's where the money is and that's where, 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 where IT is looking for. When it comes to radiologists, not a lot of that's going to help me move the needle with respect to improving, my, demonstrating my value. I think I would like to see more meaningful innovation that helps me demonstrate my value. I would like to see more evidence-driven workflow orchestration. You saw a lot of that last year, discussions about the fact that we, about using workflow to improve, because we are the masters of workflow. Radiology has been the leader with respect to other colleague, our colleagues in other clinical realms with respect to workflow and, and evidence-driven workflow. I wanted to see more of that. Uh, I, I would rather see more uh, uh, work by the vendors and offerings with respect to deep collaboration, not going beyond the message in the bottle we have with the report, where I have a report. I don't care how structured it is, it's still a message in the bottle. I hope you read it, I hope you remember to do what I told you to do in six months. We know that doesn't happen. We have to have much richer collaboration that closes the loop, that doesn't assume. We make a very strong assumption in our systems. We assume, and this is one fear I see in vendors, we tend to say that if I make a better report, a more reliable report, a structured report, rigorous report, that's good enough. Well, I think that's necessary, but I don't think that's sufficient because it makes a very, very strong and I think perhaps fatal assumption. And that is all I have to care about is making sure that the, the message, the payload is rigorous. Right. It assumes that the recipient of the payload, the human, the knowledge worker, the physician, is always going to remember to do the right thing. Yeah. If you look at other industries, that's a very strong assumption that usually fall, proves false. Humans are incredibly important assets when it comes to these, these infrastructures, but we tend to be pretty unreliable when it comes to memorizing things or remembering things. Other industries don't depend on humans to remember things like follow up a nodule in six months or make sure that you do this to make sure that uh, an adverse reaction doesn't occur. Other industries leverage IT to do this. I would like to see more of an emphasis there rather than m polishing and making better the payload. I think we should learn from other industries and say in addition to improving the payload, improve the overall mechanism by which collaboration achieves and make sure there are safety nets in case the human knowledge worker forgets something. Now if you're seeing this decoupling between the interest of the radiologist and that of the vendor, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to get this from vendors or somehow is the radiologist going to need to do this themselves? So I actually think this is where I'm actually quite optimistic and more optimistic than I was the last couple of years. I think, I think we will see vendors providing more focused solutions that demonstrate radiologist value. They may not come from the traditional vendors. I do think this decoupling where the tra trajectories uh, between radiology and, and, and our traditional vendors may start to diverge. And again, I'm not criticizing anyone. I think this is just a natural state of evolution of markets. You know, when you're talking about vendors, our traditional vendors, even in the IT vendor uh, group, uh, also uh, put a lot of the resources in modalities. Well, as people know, modalities they're important, but you, it's very difficult to be strategic with respect to depending on people always buying and replacing modalities. So they're going to have to reinvent themselves, and what you're seeing vendors do is they're reinventing themselves by pivoting towards enterprise-level IT uh, uh, initiatives and, 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 and priorities, which I think is quite rational. The problem is making digital imaging in an enterprise better may not necessarily improve the radiologist's lot. And I think we add value to taking care of patients, and I would like to see a new breed of vendors to address those issues. And that's where I'm optimistic. When I go around the technical exhibits this year, you're beginning to see newer vendors, or vendors that are trying to reinvent themselves, that actually are filling in that niche in the ecosystem, and saying, you know what, 
we're going to try to provide tools that have evidence-based uh, workflow orchestration, uh, better collaborative tools, better analytics, you know, meaningful innovation that actually helps move the needle with respect to improving my relevance, my ability to impact positively patient care. So you're beginning to see that. So it may not be the same vendors, or it may be the same vendors that ta that that, that uh, decide to reinvent themselves. Uh, so so it's not all doom and gloom, but I do see this beginning of a deviation in the tra trajectories between the, the 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 priorities of our traditional vendors from uh, 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 what we need to do to handle these okay. new environments. Um, now, I think there's another opportunity. Part of the problem, and again, there are no bad guys in this, I think part of the issue is that we radiologists need to get out of our own silos. As our vendors and the hospital in general have a more enterprise perspective, we also have to have a more enterprise perspective. We add value not only with respect to what we do as radiologists, we add value with respect to how we use information. You know, one of the biggest issues that we have seen, as you know, the big black hole in IT for years has been the EMR, right? That was the excuse we all use, and I'm an IT guy. You know, oh, we can't do anything because we got to stand up our EMR. We have literally spent millions of dollars standing up an EMR. Now, have we really realized the return on investment in that? I think most of us have become a little bit, you know, less than impressed about what we've done. And I think part of the reason, it's not the fault of the EMR, and the EMR was an important, essential first step. It's necessary, but not sufficient. Because the way in IT I view the EMR, in addition, as, as well as PACS, is that is persistence. We use that term in IT, persistence is storage. Yep. You know, We used to have paper, we used to have film. Now we've gotten rid of that, because now we have electronic persistence. The problem is we have to go beyond persistence. We have to move from persistence to perception. We need to take this stuff that we've stored and begin to understand it deeply, yeah. okay? We need to understand so we can be evidence-driven with respect to our workflow to make sure that our collaborative messages aren't forgotten or fall through the cracks. Other industries do it all the time. I can guarantee you Amazon is not depending on a human to remember to remind me to buy or renew my mm -hmm. subscription. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Systems do that. We can learn from that. So I think one of, the one of the things we need to do is, as our vendor communities tend to deviate from a radiology-centric perspective, and that's rational to do so, we also have to get out of our silos and understand that we can add value. We have always been leaders with respect to workflow. We have to go beyond that. In many ways, we have actually demonstrated what you can do when you go beyond just persistence to perception. Think about it in the early days of PACS. The early days of PACS, the first thing was get rid of film. Mm -hmm. But the real value, when you talk today in the modern day PACS environment or digital image management environment, we don't talk about storage so much. That's why I'm a little bit concerned when I hear about you know, concentration of uh, you know, uh, hardware, you know, uh, uh, vendor neutral archive, deconstructing PACS. These are discussions that are IT driven but they're not going to help me as the radiologist, all right? But one of the discussions that I, I, I think we can, we can have is we have demonstrated today, when we talk about PACs, we don't talk about the storage so much. That, that's a given, that's a commodity. What we talk about is the work list, the workflow, the workflow orchestration. We, for years, have actually understood this. When you compare our experiences with our brethren in other clinical avenues, our clinicians, our oncologists, our surgeons, they struggle with a system, an EMR, that's merely storage of data. There is no workflow orchestration. What we have demonstrated is there is a yin to the EMR's yang. We've got the yang now. We've, yeah. we've, devote, we've invested millions of dollars on the yang. We've stored stuff. Yeah. Now it's time to understand what to do with that storage. We need a yin. I'm not saying replace the EMR. I'm saying we need to complement it by a yin to the EMR's yang. And I actually believe radiologists can show a leadership position understanding what does that yin mean? That yin means evidence-driven workflow. It means collaboration with deep analytics. These are the kind of things we're beginning to understand. And I think you're seeing a new breed as well as traditional vendors pivot to understand that. Those have to be pitched at the enterprise level though. Okay. Because if you do analytics and workflow that's only reality centric, you're not going to actually affect patient care. Got you. All right, well maybe we'll talk again next year and find out how things have progressed since then. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. Bye. Signing off for antmini.com, my name is Brian Casey.